Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful. My name is Ibrahim Hooper. I'm National Communications Director for the Council on American Islamic Relations. Uh, we're gathered here today to uh, offer the Muslim community's uh, reaction, the interfaith communities, the Arab American community's reaction uh, to the election of Donald Trump. Uh, we'll hear from a number of uh, community leaders who will offer their views on what the election uh, means to their various communities. And to begin, we'll hear from Nihad Awad, uh, CARE's National Executive Director. Thank you, Ibrahim. <coughs> My name is Nihad Awad, N-I-H-A-D-A-W-A-D, -A -A the National Executive Director of CARE, the Council on American Islamic Relations. <coughs> Uh, since late last night, we have been receiving quite few questions, concerns from members of our community, family members, questions from children uh, to their parents to ask us these questions and to answer them. So today we offer our reaction to what happened last night. <coughs> As citizens of this great nation, we accept the result of the democratic process that has bound us together as one nation. Regardless of who won yesterday's election, American Muslims are here to stay. We are not going anywhere, and we will not be intimidated or marginalized. God willing, the American Muslim community will continue to mobilize, to challenge bigotry, to uphold justice, and to protect the freedoms and rights of all Americans. American Muslims will also increase outreach to their fellow citizens of other faiths and backgrounds to build bridges of mutual understanding and cooperation. We will hold the new president to the highest standard in defending the rights of all those residing in our nation as guaranteed by the U.S. Constitution. America is the strongest and best when all its communities, institutions, and leaders are working together to build a better future for its people and for the world. We look forward to continuing to work with all of our federal, state, and local leaders to achieve such a future. We will continue to be a fearless organization and principled in defending the Muslim community, regardless of who leads our nation. To those in the American Muslim community who are fearful, who are fearful of the future, know that America is your home and the home for your children. This is your future. You are not going anywhere. And you have the same rights and responsibilities as all other Americans. Rest assured that care is here for you, your family, and your children. As we always say, God is the best of planners. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Imam Johari Abdul Malik. He's with Dar al Hijra Mosque in Falls Church, Virginia, and also with the MANA Department of Government Affairs. Good afternoon, I'm Imam Johari Abdul Malik, I-M-A-M-J-O-H-A-R-I, Abdul Malik, A-B-D-U-L hyphen M-A-L-I-K. I serve as the Director of Outreach for the Dar al-Hijra, D-A-R-A-L-H-I-J-R-A-H, Islamic Center in Falls Church, Virginia. And I'm representing the Muslim Alliance in North America, MANA, uh, in their government affairs work. On behalf of our community, we would like to express uh, the issues and concerns that we have after a very heated and controversial uh, election season. Yet we stand fully in support of the democratic process, recognizing the work that was done by each individual community in upholding the values and the principles of our democratic process. Last night, Donald Trump 
delivered his acceptance speech. And in that speech, he held up the values that I hope will become consistent in his presidency. That is the, the commitment that we will move forward together as one nation, a call for national unity, a commitment to rebuild the social fabric and cohesion of America, and to stand for the civil rights and the civil liberties of everyone. As an American, as an African American, as a Muslim, we believe in these values and principles and intend to hold every elected official to the standard of democracy. I'd like to say by way of a commentary that while we have been concerned as Muslims and Asians and blacks, Hispanics, about the condition of opportunity for our communities, I feel that perhaps we have left behind the issues and concerns of middle America and poor and working class white families who feel that they have been left out of the great opportunity that has been provided economically in America in the last few decades. And so it is our commitment to reach out in our outreach work, to engage a social change that will improve the quality of life in America, not just for historical minorities, but also for the white working and middle class Americans who have gotten behind a campaign to change the tenor of the American political process. In closing, we want to say that Dr. Martin Luther King reminds us that it is not enough for us to be concerned about, as the Good Samaritan was concerned about, the person who was robbed on the highway, but we must work together to repair the road to Jericho such that it will be an opportunity for all Americans. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Ilhan Kagri of the Muslim Public Affairs Council. Good afternoon. My name is Ilhan Kagri, I-L-H-A-N-C-A-G-R-I. Last night represented a shift in the American political landscape and exposed the deep divisions in our nation. This presidential campaign did not create these divisions, but reminded us how changing demographics in our country have created fear and hysteria in some, leading to unrest and a fractured society. We accept the results of the election because we believe in the principles of democracy and the peaceful transition of power. We have to deal with the presidency no matter who is in office, and we have to engage all Americans no matter what their political persuasion, their race, or their creed. We American Muslims will be among those who represent the conscience of the American people based on a vision of pluralism and equality under the law. Engagement is needed now more than ever. MPAC will redouble on our principle of seeking common ground, whether with the left or the right. We will work with those who are disenfranchised and those who feel left out. We will base our relationships with all people and sectors of society on the principles of freedom, liberty, and justice for all. That, in our minds and in our souls, is the truest path to unity as Americans. Our work with our allies in the media, Hollywood, and civil society will be critical in promoting ideas that counter xenophobia. Our allies in law enforcement will be our line of defense against any threat to our community. We will continue to engage all governmental and non-governmental sectors to establish common ground and defend our democracy. Additionally, we will deepen our relationships with other people of color and marginalized communities who will be detrimental, detrimentally impacted by this political upheaval. We understand the fears from those who have been subjected to racial discrimination and socioeconomic inequities. We recommit our solid solidarity with all of you. We are in this together. We understand that those who do not accept the changing demographics of our society feel fearful. Knowing one another across racial, religious, and political differences is our sacred duty. It is time for dialogue and engagement. 
True security will be achieved when we are each other's protector from any and all kinds of injustice and violence. Selective justice is a form of injustice. We commit to working with any and all to protect the best of America's values and freedoms. And we will work with all to protect America's houses of worship, our schools, our neighborhoods, and our public gatherings. Next, we'll hear from the Reverend Stephen D. Martin with the National Council of Churches. Greetings. Uh, my name is the Reverend Stephen D. Martin. That's S-T-E-V-E-N, D as in dog, uh, Martin, M-A-R-T-I-N. And I am the Director of Communications with the National Council of the Churches of Christ in the USA. I also come to you as someone who uh, has been involved in interfaith work for many, many, many years. Um, I, my acquaintance with the Muslim community in this country goes way back, as does the connection between the National Council of Churches <clears throat> and its interfaith partners. The thing that we're most concerned about today is the level of fear that we see among our partners. We see people very concerned about their futures, about their economic futures, and we hear daily about incidents of hatred and bias against our Muslim brothers and sisters. Now that comes strange to me because I have only encountered kindness, generosity, and true faithfulness from my brothers and sisters in all of my encounters. We have shared that kind of experience in a massive scale in our work in interfaith conversations at the National Council of Churches. We are aware of the way people are hurting today. We are aware that the pain in which our, that, that is manifest in our society is manifest in the election results that are before us today. We also are deeply respectful of the democratic process and feel it is so very necessary to stand behind our leaders and we pledge to do so. But we also call upon our leaders, those who are newly elected and those who are coming into a different kind of power in our country today, we call upon them to exercise their power with compassion, with care, and with deep concern for all Americans so that no one is left behind, so that we all prosper and we all join together. It is in this kind of America that we will all be able to exercise true faith, a faith that is found in freedom. Thank you very much. Next we'll hear from Naeem Beg, President of the Islamic Circle of North America. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of God, the Beneficent, the Merciful, Assalamu Alaikum, good afternoon. My name is Naeem Beg, N-A-E-E-M-B-A-I-G, and I'm President of Islamic Circle of North America. First, we would like to congratulate <coughs> President-elect Donald Trump on his surprising victory last night. This was an appalling election season that saw Islamophobia, anti-immigrant, sexist and racist rhetoric become mainstream in the United States. It is now incumbent on President-elect Donald Trump to heal the nation and address the needs of all Americans. We urge the Muslim community to remain cautious in the coming days after these elections. Nevertheless, we welcome what turned out to be a safe, fair, and free election process and thank the hundreds of nonprofits and thousands of activists for ensuring this. We ask that the new administration ensure the safety, security, and freedom of worship of minorities and their places of worship, in particular those who have been threatened. We also request the Department of Justice to keep a close eye on known hate groups and or individuals who are now organized, vocal, and well-networked. In the event of any hate crimes, we ask that the law enforcement act quickly and decisively. Furthermore, we would like to express our gratitude to thousands of Muslim volunteers who campaigned for their candidates and the dozens of Muslim candidates who ran 
for several offices. We would also like to extend a congratulatory greeting to all of the Muslim American candidates who won their respective elections. Lastly, we would also like to congratulate Hillary Clinton on running an amazing campaign and for winning the popular vote. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Rafi Uddin Ahmed uh, with the uh, Darrell. Uh, Oh, Muslim Association of Virginia, sorry. Thank you, Ibrahim. Uh, good afternoon. My name is uh, Rafiuddin Ahmed, R-A-F-I-U-D-D-I-N-A-H-M-E-D. -E the strength of our republic lies in the checks and balances in the diplomatic, uh, de democratic system, the constitutional rights, the and protection guaranteed to all its citizens, the good will and actions of our country's upstanding social and political leaders along with a strong and fair judicial system. The Muslim American community is ready to work with our newly elected president towards the betterment of our, of our republic. We have seen animosity and fear grow in our community throughout this election cycle. We have worked hard in our com uh, commitment to America, our home, and it will continue to do so. Despite the negativity uh, directed toward the Muslim American community, we believe the Constitution will provide equal protection to all American citizens. This country is blessed with many elected officials who have strong moral values and who reflect the impeccable character of our nation. This country is blessed with principled and fair judicial system that strives to deliver justice to all. This country is blessed to have the voices of all Americans represented in government. We have just been through a very divisive election for the American people, one like any we have seen in the past. It is time for healing process to begin. Let us unite as one nation, and God bless the United States of America. Next, we'll hear from Abu Nahidian, Imam and Director of the Manassas Mosque and School. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Abu Fadl Nahidian, A B O L F A Z L N A H I D I A N, Imam and Director of Manassas Mosque School. We as a Muslims open up the dialogue of civilization. We belong to each other. I cannot say I, me, myself, but rather we open the dialogue of us, we, and him, the control of the earth and the heaven. We will try to work with our new president to say that the walls of separation has to come down. The way of I, me, myself has to be converted to us, we, and the peace and harmony of heaven above. We belong to each other and let us act as we do belong to each other and work with each other. As a Muslims, we always believe that a day shall come that we will live under the peace and harmony of the heaven above as it is created for all of us. And we will work together in dialogue. Be not fearful, <coughs> stay where you are. We have the power of Almighty God with all of us. Thank you. Sir. Next, we'll hear from uh, Kristen Shremsky uh, with the American Muslims for Palestine. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Kristen Shremsky. I'm the Director of Media and Communications for American Muslims for Palestine. My last name is spelled S-Z-R-E-M-S-K-I. Well, we almost broke that glass ceiling. Uh, maybe next time. Anyway, I'm here. Um, for the American Muslims for Palestine and as Americans we at AMP assert that we cherish the peaceful transfer of power in this country is a defining characteristic of American democracy and in that vein we find that we must then congratulate President-elect Donald Trump on his decisive victory last night and we also congratulate Hillary Clinton for winning the popular vote. That being said, though, we do note that it's imperative that Mr. Trump 
put aside his divisive rhetoric and remind him that he has an obligation and a responsibility to uphold his constitutional responsibilities when he becomes the President of the United States. Last night in his acceptance speech, Mr. Trump spoke about unity and bridging the gap that exists between Americans. We hope he will adopt a more positive discourse, one that is inclusive of all Americans, regardless of faith, national origin, race, physical abilities, gender, and sexual orientation. We are all Americans, and his administration must promise to treat each and every citizen and resident of the United States with equality and justice. There is a lot of fear out there among Muslims and other impacted communities, but we know that when we come together and and uh, we have to come together in unity to work for the democratic process, and that is going to help the nation heal and, and to move forward. Muslims are not aliens in this country. We are long-standing citizens, and we expect to be treated as such. We should not be singled out, subjected to surveillance, and otherwise marginalized by threats to close our mosques, make us carry special IDs, or to ban Muslims from entering the United States. Likewise, we expect fair and equal treatment for African Americans, Latinos, immigrants, and other communities. They should enjoy the same rights and privileges as every American. One of the prevailing guiding principles of this country is our system of checks and balances and divided powers of government. And we were happy about that, and we expect Mr. Trump to respect and uphold these principles as well. It is our Constitution with its Bill of Rights and other inherent rights and privileges which makes America great. While we pledge to come together for the common good of our country and our society, we expect Mr. Trump to abide by these constitutional principles. And uh, again, we can't stress enough that AMP has encouraged so many of our constituents and our youth to engage in the civic process. We work with our interfaith partners and we will continue to do so to help heal this country and move forward because America is great and we're very happy about the democratic principles here. Thank you. Now we'll hear from Asil El Borno, uh, Executive Director of Muslim American Society of Washington, D.C. Good afternoon, and thank you for coming today. My name is Asil El Borno. It's spelled A S E E L, and last name is E L B O R N O. I'm the Executive Director of the Muslim American Society in Washington, D.C. In the wake of the election results, uh, American Muslims have recommitted themselves to being the best in this nation. And that means striving for excellence in our workplace and schools, being a caring and loving neighbor, participating in local government and politics, and contributing to the development of our American Muslim community. We commit to staying engaged in this country, and we commit to not forgetting our allies. We have a duty to serve and protect all people in the United States who are feeling alienated and in danger. There are those who are already working tirelessly to secure our place in this country. The Washington Post reported that American Muslim can the community had won several positions yesterday, including the victory of 34-year-old Muslim woman named Ilhan Omar as she successfully became the first Somali American woman to be elected to state legislator in Minnesota. In Michigan, professional WWE wrestler Terrence Serino Guido Guerin was also handedly defeated by Muslim American Abdullah Haboud in the race for Michigan's 15th House District seat. And Muslim um, Representative Keith Ellison retained his congressional seat in Minnesota's 5th District. We commit to moving forward with all of our victories and continuing to work with our allies and our communities all over the United States. And we hope that President-elect Donald Trump makes the same commitment with us. Thank you. And finally, we'll hear from Colin Christopher, uh, Deputy Director of Government Affairs at Dar al-Hijra Mosque in uh, Falls Church, Virginia, who will describe some of the uh, political mobilization efforts of the Muslim community. Hi, everyone. My name is Colin Christopher, C-O-L-I-N. Christopher C H R I S T O P H E R, Deputy Director of Government Affairs at Dar al Hijra Islamic Center in Falls Church, Virginia. This is a historic campaign for a number of reasons. Uh, in Virginia, our mosque uh, had a, a record 
turnout uh, as well as mobilization process. We started months ago. We had over 50 volunteers. We registered over 400 voters. Um, we had over 9,000 robocalls go out the night before the election. In Fairfax County, where we are, there was an 80% turnout, and we believe that our mosque was uh, a significant portion of that high turnout in our area. But it wasn't just having the early voter vans or driving people to the polls in our program called Souls to the Polls, providing free rides to anyone in our community who called us on Election Day. There is a sense that the Muslim community is not engaged just in this election, but that the Muslim community understands its place in society moving forward. It has historically, but will continue to do so in larger numbers. We saw youth uh, as, as small as 10 years old staying five hours in our mosque to make phone calls, telling our community about how important it was to get out and vote. We saw 80-year-olds who had never voted before getting involved and wanting more. We saw other people who wanted to run for election in, at the local level, uh, whether it's school board or uh, in the county in Fairfax as well. And we expect this to continue. This election in Virginia uh, was a success for our community as well as many other mosques. And we're hopeful that this is not uh, an anomaly, but that this is going to become the norm for our community moving forward. Thank you. Well, if anyone has any questions, we'll take a question. Otherwise, everybody here will be available for one-on-one -on -one interviews. All right, well, thank you for coming. And, oh, oh, oh OK, go ahead. I know it's been mere hours. I'm Ali Takaka from ABC News. Um, since uh, it became official that Donald Trump would be the president-elect, but I'm just wondering, in these mere hours, has he or anyone from his campaign, any Republicans from, you know, the RNC, anyone reached out to CARE? Uh, not to CARE that I know of. I don't know about any other organization. You want? Um, to our knowledge, uh, Mr. Pr uh, Trump or any member of his campaign uh, never reached out or has not reached out to CARE or to any uh, representatives of the Muslim organizations. However, we invite him, as we have invited him before, to engage the American Muslim leadership to meet and to have a serious and deep conversation about the future of this country and how we can work together. Do, do, just one quick follow-up. <coughs> do you plan to reach out? I know I remember um, during the press conference as, after he released his controversial policy about banning Muslims from coming into the country, some Muslims from coming into the country, um, that you offered a similar uh, invitation. Are you going to make moves now that he actually is our president-elect to kind of formalize an invitation to do that? It is our obligation as Muslims, as citizens, to be gracious and to communicate with the leaders of our uh, country. So definitely we will be uh, taking steps uh, towards reaching out to him, but also as the elected leader, we expect him to reach out, especially to the communities that have felt threatened by his uh, rhetoric. And not only the Muslim community, the Latinos, the Mexicans, the African-American communities, the reporter he made fun of, uh, and, and many others. Uh, he owes um, serious steps and, and, and initiatives to heal our nation, but definitely we will do our part. Oh, sure. Um, all of the people here are organizations, represent organizations that have long-term engagement with the government, and they're going to be continuing in that eng engagement. None of them expect to decrease the level of engagement. In fact, they expect to increase the level of their engagement. It's just that we're looking for a tenor of engagement that's a little bit more positive than, <laughs> than exactly, uh, that's more positive than uh, what the rhetoric has led us to believe. So uh, we're here. We're going to continue to engage. We're going to continue to represent not only the American Muslim uh, community, but the best of America. And uh, we're, we're hopeful that that's going to lead uh, to good results.
All right. Well, thank you all for coming. And uh, as I said, everyone's available for oh, one more. Okay, Sorry go ahead. Uh, Sean Matthews from CBS. Um, my question is for you, Mr. Um, Awad. Um, I believe you had touched on earlier, especially the younger Muslim community had some concerns. What were some of those concerns that you heard? Obviously, um, the, the real pressure that we feel is in the silent majority in our community who feel the, the pressure and they feel the discrimination in silence. Um, we conduct surveys. One of our chapters in California has conducted a survey in the state of California where it shows that the majority of Muslim students have been bullied in public schools. And this is a serious phenomenon that we see um, culminated with the threats that Donald Trump and others uh, have threatened the Muslim community with forcing them in the future to hold special ID cards, to shut down some of their mosques, and to prevent their relatives from coming to the United States just because they're Muslim. This is terrifying to young American Muslims who are born and raised here. They know no other country but the United States, and they see a potential leader threatening their future with this. So we feel it. I felt it yesterday as I was monitoring the, the results. I received text messages from leaders, from parents. They need us to assure them that America is their home. And the newly elected leader is not going to fulfill his threats. So this is a serious wound in our society. And no one can heal it but the one who made that threat, and all of us together, working together. Uh, to answer your question directly, um, we work with a number of youth at our mosque. Um, just some context, uh, the, d the very area where we uh, live is one of the most diverse in the entire nation. Over 90 languages are spoken within a few mile radius of our mosque. And within that context, we have six-year-old girls being called ISIS, having their hijab turn off, torn off, um, eating lunch in the bathroom by themselves, um, and worse. This was before last night. So we are terrified of the bold and brazen uh, attitudes that this morning we heard from parents and students in the hallways of classrooms in our communities about what is going to happen moving forward. And it is incumbent upon our leadership, political, social, community leaders, uh, interfaith community that has stood behind us to speak up and out against this kind of inappropriate behavior. Politics is politics, and bigotry is bigotry. And those two need to be separated. Can I just add to that? So, um, the tone of being fearful of the other permeates not only American Muslims, but non-Muslims as well. I can tell you a story. I have a six-year-old granddaughter who attends a school in Washington, D.C. And uh, her best friend said to her uh, a couple of months ago at the height of the rhetoric, Sophia, if Donald Trump becomes president, are you going to have to leave the country? Mm. So it's affecting both people. It's scaring the non-Muslim girl as well as the Muslim girl. This is something that's not just for Muslim Americans. We don't want any children to be afraid that p other children are going to be kicked, uh, picked up and kicked out, right? Is that you, Did you want to uh, Just to echo uh, your comment, the, the mosque received an email this morning from one of our neighbors saying, I can only imagine how disappointed and probably fearful members of your faith must be feeling this morning. I had to write to say that my family and our friends will always welcome you in America and we'll fight to protect everyone's right to worship. Don't lose hope and don't withdraw from political life. As Jews, we know what it is like to be treated as second class citizens in our own country. And we also know how critical it is to be politically organized and involved. So you're right. It is not this sense of anxiety about what it means to be American is of concern not only to people who are Muslim or Hispanic or black or, or uh, other abled or gay, straight, lesbian. There is something happening 
that is affecting all of us. And our neighbor wrote us to say, but we're going to stand together in this. And thank, I'm telling you, there are probably some people who we forgot about in our advocacy, uh, who, who their job is going to China or, their, or Mexico, and they feel discriminated against. Maybe some of them might be calling CARE to say, can you help us? Because after this election, it's going to become apparent the suffering that not only minorities are experiencing, but the forgotten in this country who have missed out on the economic uh, promise of our nation. All right. Well, again, thank you all for coming, and everyone's available for one-on-one -on -one interviews. Thank you. Yeah.